Hey everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel. And of course, we're going to go crazy. Portia is driving us crazy. She is really letting us go crazy. Go crazy. Go crazy. Okay, not literally. We're just throwing a little humor in there. But sometimes she does make you want to scratch your head or scratch your ass. Either one is fine, okay? Because I just don't know where she comes from. Where's she, where she going half the time, okay? Sometimes I think her mind's on that freedom train of that underground railroad and just, just taking her around and around and around <coughs> like a carousel uh, horse uh, merry-go-round. And she just can't seem to get off. But I don't understand how she can say she loves her mama, she values her mother, she looks up to her mother, but yet she dogs her mother. And this is the last time I'm going to read from this book. I have put it down. But I just thought that was just piss poor. But I'm going to give her accolades at one time. Because I felt the same way about my mother. When I had either got sick. Or I just wanted to feel her. Or just being safe. Uh, and secure. I, do, I did too. Used to go to my mother's room and get in her bed and um sleep there when i was sick or i was troubled about something or scared and i'm talking about when i was like maybe four i don't know uh probably up to like 16 <laughs> just told me get get my ass out of my her bed and get in my own bed it was ridiculous what i was doing but you know i did what i had to do i still slept in her bed when she wasn't there Oh, but anyway, she goes in to talk about how she began to form her business uh, with um, her, we call it bed sheets. Uh, I forgot what they were called. Pampered by Portia is what they called. And she was telling us the inspiration where it came from to produce those products. And why she felt so comfortable about doing it. Well, she goes in to say... Um, when she was a kid, she was always obsessed about, you know, having the perfect bedroom or the perfect bedroom sheets to sleep in. It always made her feel like a princess or whatnot. Well, that's the idea I got from it. <coughs> but that was the key reason and um, why she wanted to develop her own sheets. It kind of thought. It kind of took her back to a place when she was a child, and she felt insecure. She was more. Uh, being towards an introvert rather than an extrovert meaning more so into yourself quiet only deal with certain people you trust or whatnot not, not very sociable or outgoing that was Portia's what she was trying to give us but if we go on into this uh, particular page that she was uh, something that I could identify uh, truly with uh, she says, nostalgia also plays a huge part in choosing what companies I work with and get excited about. One of the reasons I started Pampered by Portia, luxurious sheets that are affordable and will transform any bed into an oasis, was because my mom put these uh, same sheets on my bed without me knowing. And I fell in love with them. I know it sounds crazy, but I've always loved buying sheets for my bed. My obsession, my obsession came with the same place as most good things in my life. My mom, who would always be in the store buying sheets when I was a kid. Not to mention, I had always loved lying in my mama's bed. There was part of my childhood. Uh, that was part of my childhood. It was my comfort place. She would always let me be in her room with her. Her sheets always felt like butter across my skin. If I'm not ever at my mama's house, even today... If I'm ever at my mother's house and I want to take a nap in her bed, I know it will be the best sleep of my life. It's her smell, her perfume, her comforting jersey and cotton sheets. They just remind me of my mom. Okay, so I can say to a certain extent, um, well, my mom pretty much just smelled like soap and water. But it was just the fragrance that it gave off. And she always used to. Put these like snuggle or real like baby type scents, air, not air fresheners, but laundry scents in the dryer. And when her bed was just like all made, because she always had these cute comforters or really grown for us comforters that I used to say. And every time I either got sick, I remember one time when I had the chicken pox and she was just really concerned about me because I was running a high fever. She just let me get in her bed. I used to always get into the center of the bed. And uh, I used to always be there. She used to like treat me 
like I was in a hotel or something. She was my maid or something. <laughs> but I was always have the best dreams. And I always felt secure. So anytime that I, you know, was uh, like sick or something. And she knew it. I would always find myself in her bed. And, you know, uh, my brother was like, girl, get out of that bed. That's mama bed. And, all this stuff. and then he would always tell her to leave her, leave me alone. She don't feel good. And I want to keep my eye on her and stuff. So I really felt special when it was coming to that time. Or when we were kids. And it was Christmas time coming. And she was like, well, Santa Claus can't come until um, you all go to bed, go to sleep. And she didn't know well no my brother broke it to me about santa claus that it wasn't no santa claus wasn't no white man coming in our neighborhood and all this kind of stuff he told me girl you're so stupid um <laughs> your mama getting on some toys and daddy getting them you know and auntie getting them ain't no santa claus coming in him and he bust my boat i'm so mad at him because that's when i got my choo-choo train my uh chugga chugga choo-choo ding ding choo-choo i don't know if y'all had lionel play world back in the day but that was our toy store it wasn't toys or us as most kids would know today but when you were born in my era uh when i in my childhood we had lionel play world so i always wanted this little uh train it went by batteries it was just like this one cargo train it wasn't one of those ones you had to link other cabooses to it just this one big red engine train and it, it did everything it had made whistles bells and, oh it's the cutest little thing i didn't think about it now and I, I used to even look in toys of us when i got older of course and grown um for that particular train and it's, it's non-existent it's like it never exists um in the toy stores but if you google it it comes up so i was like oh my goodness so uh you know that's just some of the things i used to uh do when um it was time for christmas time i used to sleep in her bed christmas eve and we would wake up Child used to do that when i was 13 14 years old and she had got to the point where she started just giving giving us night stuff uh, and gave us like a, a gift certificate not a gift certificate but a, a card that said you know you have this lemon on this particular store that you like because at the time it was like jewelry service merchandise was one of the jewelry companies out here in atlanta that i used to partake of and clothing stores so she used to just go on and get me and my brother um little gift cards or whatnot i think they were gift certificates at the time when i was growing up but she put the denomination on there she would you know it would tell us how much we could spend in each store so we used to have like uh underwear and and uh what do you call it bed not bed things but bed clothing and maybe some sweaters that she would put under the tree and then we would have our little uh brown bag sack where we had uh apples or oranges or our favorite candy and nuts and stuff of that thing at first we didn't like it but then after you know we should take it to school after we go back just to have you know snacks and stuff you know our um friends she said where y'all get that from where, can i have some stuff like that so we were like damn this is something good we can make money off this but you know it was most of my brother trying to sell his stuff but i would eat my stuff or giving it away to you know close friends and, or things of that nature but i can't identify when portia was saying that she used to always want to be in her mother's bed even to now i would go sit on my mama's bed and lay down and curl up she was like what you doing to him <laughs> And I'm 54 years old. Y'all, I'm 54 years old. But I don't know. I guess it's just you see your parents or parent, depending on how you grew up uh, in those formative years. You just see them as your keeper. You see them as your protector. You know, because, you know, the dads are supposed to be the breadwinner, the provider, the protector, uh, the resource person you would go to when you had problems. But, you know, in certain um households i'm not gonna say black because it's you know it, it happens in everybody's culture and religion that they don't have a two-parent household and things have gotten so uh they're changing so much now you have like uh, two of the same gender parents in your household so and one functions more on a, a maternal side and the other one functions more on a you know father's side so it's those still dynamics are still there um but it's just like you just feel so secure in their bed, you know, and nothing can harm you, not even bad dreams or anything to that nature. So I could definitely uh, um, understand and could definitely 
see where Portia was going with that as being uh, in her mother's bed and wanting to be near her mother or think about her mother or that was the safest place for her when she was ill and when she wasn't ill. Um, just having the the mother, um, what do you call it? I don't know, just a sense of your mother's being there that draws you to that particular reference or, or that particular space where your mother held you so closely and maybe read books to you or had good conversations with you that you always find yourself going back to that space or that bed that your mother um was sleeping in or still sleep in and you can find that peace you know when you're feeling bad when you're feeling overwhelmed when you're feeling sick you just want your mama and you want you know where she's at and where she feels comfortable at and usually that is in their bedroom so i could definitely identify with her with that particular thing but then i got mad at portia because you know i'm like did you did you check with your mama before you put this book out girl because if my daughter wrote a book like that i needed to read it from cover to cover cover to cover from page one to the page you know the ending of the page to make sure there were things in there that i didn't want told about my life because i would be like okay that's your life you speak your truth you can do whatever you want to but my truth is my truth and i decide whether i want my truth to be in your book you know for the whole world to see so i'm like ah, portia did you run this by your mother because on the next uh portion of the book after she goes in to say why she um produced uh what do you call it what was it called uh, pampered by portia those bed sheets yeah she goes she gives us a scenario where she talks about her mother and her pitfalls and what she had to endure and what may or may not have surrounded her on what she went through as far as limited resources and i'm like portia why are you telling your mama business and stuff that like that that wasn't for you to tell because i wouldn't even want my daughter to tell if i tell you the story of what happened to me that was between me and you now how you worded it you leave me out of it and you you know what i'm saying you leave me out of it because i don't want people to know my business unless i'm telling the story myself but you can have said you lean on the experiences of people that you knew you held in the highest regard and this that and the third just camouflage it like that but don't be giving us a pinpoint of your mother's financial history baby but anyway to give you an idea of what i am talking about on the next page she talks about her mother's uh pitfalls and the things that she had to go through to be able to start a business lose a business and lose friends okay concerning the business that she was uh partaking of which was the daycare entity i think she's referring to but she goes on and says uh, my mom may not have had all the resources whether there was due whether that was due to bad credit debt or inexperienced business partners but she taught me that if you have faith it'll come to pass then she went down and said my mom took her faults in business and was transparent about them so that i could win when she took a couple of hits from working with friends it taught me to ensure i had or i would have a solid team around me to build my brand my manager karen help facilitate my manif and manifest my businesses and now that i have money to invest my accountant and financial advisors help me build my legacy because at this point i'm no longer working for me i'm working for my daughter i'm working for future generations it's what my mother did for me and so i have to pass that down okay so i'm like mm. bad move pressure bad move uh, i would never have told my mother's difficulties and saying whether it was derived from either being in debt, a large amount of debt, having bad credit, and having inexperienced business partners. Now, uh, you know, it kind of made your mother look like she didn't know what the hell she was doing. And she was on winging it on a wing and a prayer. And that's not good etiquette when it comes to running a business. You can't run it like, you know, where and when you're going to get the next month. Uh, but batch of money to pay your staff as well as yourself and to pay the utilities to keep the business at, you know at hand 
in running order. And when you sat up there and, you know, because you had told us about your mother and everything in the first couple of chapters. And even in the middle part of your chapters. And then at the end, you're going to bring it back that, no, my mom did not have good credit. No, my mom uh, did not have people around her that knew what they were doing. And she did have bad credit. You know, we didn't need to know all of that. We really didn't. And I think that was just piss poor of you to even bring any of that up. Let people be shine. Let them shine in the best possible light. Especially when the focus is off them. I mean, focus is on them and off of you. But, you know, do you have bad credit, Portia? Baby, let us know now. Because you don't put your mama out there. Uh, are you in a large amount of debt? I know you ain't got on all that debt with Simon. Or you ain't learned nothing from your book that you're trying to peddle off to society thinking you've learned and you've grown from your mistakes and the mistakes your mother had to make so you couldn't have to possibly make the same mistakes uh are you in debt Portia let us sister know because since you're throwing your mama all out there we need to know about you I mean does your mom is Diane need to write a book and include some of your pitfalls some of your shortcomings letting us know that you're in debt you're over your head uh, you don't know where your next paycheck coming from. Your worries and all of this thing. Does your mother have to write a book about how she overcame raising you? Child, please. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining me in my video where we close the book on Portia's, uh, the pursuit of Portia's book. We will no longer look at it again. Uh, I've done several. Um, videos on certain parts of the book that I agree with and some I did not some I gave high points majority of the book I did not because it was full of shit pretty much but hey it is what it is how you say um you got with your money sometime and you lose I lost out in a sense but I gave y'all an insight of what was in the book so you can make your own decisions on whether you want to support Portia and her endeavors uh i do plan to try to buy those sheets just to see what they're all about um and give her a little coin in her pocket soon and i once i do get them and i sleep on them for a month i will let you know what they felt like did they give me the same well i probably you know well it'll be a month i could say a month uh and if they're fabulous because i i basically would know within a week or two because I, I change my sheets sometimes every two weeks because it's just me in the bed and i'm a very clean person but you know my mom changes her sheets every week but I, I ain't up to that status right now but every two weeks and then i wash them so i want to be able to wash them to see them Tell the truth with this over going on. I should wash them first and then put them on my bed. So either or I'll let you know how it was as far as the present presentation of the packaging. And to actually get the film and see what it feels like when I just roll up my skin across it or rub my hand across it. And then I'll wash them and then I'll let y'all know that it's, you know, did it have that same quality of a rub or of a feel once they were washed. And then we'll just sleep on them for two weeks. So it'll take me about a month to pretty much get it all together so I can come and do one quick video about it. So y'all can decide if y'all want to partake in them or not. Or, you know, maybe you already have and you can tell me what they feel like. Uh, and how durable are they? Do they stand up to silver washes and they don't fade and all that kind of stuff or start picking? Uh, like some sheets do I've had. it would be like these little balls. That, you know, like you have on your socks sometimes. When you don't worn through them a lot. Uh, does it stand up to the test of time of many washes or does it just, you know, fail? Or are they good sheets? You know, let me know if you have uh, bought any of them and you enjoyed them and you think it'll be a good purchase. Then I might purchase it real soon uh, versus when I say I'm going to purchase them and it could be hell uh, Christmas time. <laughs> Who knows? But y'all enjoy y'all selves and I will see y'all next video. Bye bye.